Rovers win 2-1 in the Battle of the BRFCs at Ewood Park. Which one came out on top? I'll tell you in just one tick. with another match review now if you haven't done so already make sure you hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers the games are coming thick and fast we've just done this Bristol Rovers game and we're going to be moving on to the Blackpool game and that kicks off on Tuesday and we'll talk more about that in another video but today we're going to be talking about the battle of the RFCs at Ewood Park and Blackburn Rovers coming out 2-1 winners at the end of the day at the end of the day there's three goals in the 90 minutes over 11 minutes spell but it ended in 2-1 win in favour of Blackburn Rovers courtesy of courtesy of goals from Charlie Morgan from the spot and then Dominic Samuel. As for Bristol Rovers, Harrison got the first goal of the day on the 58th minute. So let's take a little closer look at the statistics. Blackburn Rovers dominate possession 56% compared to 44 for Bristol Rovers. 14 shots on the day, 9 for Bristol Rovers, 5 on target, 2 for Bristol Rovers, 3 corners. Bristol Rovers dominated with 4. As for fouls, 9 for Blackburn, 11 for Bristol Rovers. Let's take a closer look look now at the starting 11, starting with Blackburn Rovers. David Raya in goal, Ryan Nambi, Paul Downing, Charlie Morgu, Derek Williams, Corey Evans, Richie Smallwood, Peter Whittingham, Bradley Dack, Marcus Anderson and Joe Nottle. The formation was a little bit of a 4-3-3 with uh, Marcus uh, Anderson and Bradley Dack supporting Joe Nottle up front and then they're kind of a a defensive midfield core of Corey Evans, Richard Smallwood and Peter Whittingham. To be honest with you, it didn't really pay off. Blackburn were quite dull in the first half and, a di and pretty toothless, to be honest with you. So I think that gamble, the Tinker Man in Tony Mowbray, kind of failed uh, today. But we did get the result in the end, which is all that matters. That's all my match ratings for the players. Uh, Charlie Mulgrew, skipper's performance uh, this afternoon, 9, nine out of 10. He made a couple of... Uh, Deadly tackles that saved our bacon, and he also got the first goal for Rovers on the day uh, from the penalty spot. Cool as you like. Um, I think that's going to push him up the top end of our goal scoring uh, scorers chart. David Raya also got a pretty decent performance with an eight. The rest of the, the players that we're looking at sixes and sevens. Uh, Joe Notto had a, had a pretty quiet affair today and, and didn't really have many uh, good highlights to uh, get excited about. But the substitutions were, were critical for today with uh, um, Dominic Samuel coming out scoring the winner and De uh, Danny Graham also playing key uh, member in the squad setting up the chance. As for our visitors, so our visitors, they lined up like this. Smith and Goal, Ledbetter, Lockyer, Sweeney, Brown, Partlington, Sinclair, O'Clark, Bowden, Sircombe and Harrison who was a nightmare for the whole 90 minutes. You know, he had, I think he had a goal disallowed but uh, eventually got on the score sheet, actually started to cause the, the drama for the afternoon. So that's just a little snippet of what I have to think about it. What does the gaff have to think about it? Let's take a little listen what he had to say after the match about the performance and the rest of the week coming up. Yeah, it was, um, it looked for 20 minutes as if it was going to be a comfortable day for us. I thought we had a lot of the ball and we pushed them back. They couldn't really get out of their half and then... They sort of grew into the game after the, the first counter-attack and they were a threat on the break. They had some really good speed to break away. Uh, I think we almost got a little bit confident with our retention of the ball. Um, and I think the second half of the, of the first half was really difficult for us. Uh, they got a goal that was disallowed for offside eventually, uh, which was frustrating for them. Um, I think the game sort of stretched a little bit. I think we needed it to stretch because I think their tactics first half were... were were good and getting them some opportunities on the break. I thought they were really fast to, to counter attack away. And yet, when the game went a bit little, little bit end to end, it was almost as if they grew in confidence and committed more men forward. It left us left us more opportunities to have strikes at goal. Um, and I think we reacted really well. I thought the substitutes made a huge impact on the game when they came on. I thought Danny Graham showed what he's all about: his experience, the use of his body, um, and Dominic did ultimately what he was being brought here for to score goals and work hard and, and be a menace and um, yeah so happy job done I'd like to give them a lot of credit for you know it's it's, it's uh, they came and uh, had a good game plan but we talk a lot about game management and how, different types of football matches when teams are pressing us are better with the ball than us how we can break away on them and, and, and days um, like today where you have to be more guarded against counter-attack but we still have to find a way to go and score a goal yeah, I think so. I think so. And yet every game's different. When they're playing at home, they can't play like that at home. 
they won't play everybody behind the ball, one up front where you try and counter attack away, because uh, teams will sit in against them and they've probably found it difficult to break teams down and teams have probably done to them what they tried to do to us today and, um, and thus they've lost 1-0 or whatever the score would be. It, that's what football is, you know, home and away, find a way to win, find a way, what's the best way to do it? Is it to sit in and counter attack or is it to press really high and be really positive and leave yourself exposed if you play against a really good passing team? So, um, just for us, the positives today is that we found a way to win. We we uh, went more direct second half. We missed out that big block of players they had in the middle of the park. We went over the top of it. Graham kept the ball in their box and we scored a couple of goals. No, no, it's, 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 we've got a squad of players. I've said to them every day that... Um, that we all are going to contribute to, to our destiny this year, whatever it might be. They have to be ready, they have to be fit. That's why the unseen things of football, the fans see the 11 playing the game, they don't see the, the 10 who have to train after the match and work hard on a Sunday and get the legs going. Because when we need them on a Tuesday, there's no excuses that they haven't played for three or four weeks. They have to work and uh, it's great credit to the players that they keep fit. They know that when they're called upon, they have to produce, which Danny and Dominic both did today fantastically well. Yeah, as I was mentioning, somebody said in the dressing room we could have had four penalties today, but um, it doesn't matter. It's a, it, Referees, honest people, getting on with the job, doing the best they can. Um, you get them, you don't get them. You know, we have enough with the officials today for a goal that looked as if it was a goal. We were almost lining up to kick off again and the goal got disallowed. So um, I can't sit here and complain about the officials. Ultimately, if that decision was right, they got the. It's ultimately all we want is the right decision. So when I look back at it, if he was offside, it's the right decision. And, uh, and I'm sure their manager would say the same. It. Um, if it's, if it's not offside, their manager should be fuming, of course. But um, it was a big decision for the officials, and, and let's hope they got it right and it didn't affect the course of the game. So that was the, what the gaff had to say. What did the fans and the players have to say? Let's take a look at what's been happening on social media. First and foremost, Marcus Anderson said, Great team effort today. Come back from 1-0 down. Thanks for your support, and see you all on Tuesday. Dominic Samuel also said, Great team effort today. Great fight from 1-0 down. Happy to get back on the score sheet. Another three points in the bag. He also continues great fight back from the boys to get the win today. Back on the score sheet. I guess that must have been a uh, you know promo in his um, Instagram post. I didn't actually see the picture. Uh, Derek Williams also said three wins and three and another assist. Happy days. Thanks to the fans that came out. Elliot Bennett also said three on the spin. Enjoy your weekend and see you again Tuesday night. Ryan Nimby also in on the action. Three and three. Good to uh, good to be back home with another win. On to Tuesday, no, David Raya said, great win today to make three wins in a row. Great team effort coming from behind. Meanwhile, uh, Dave Bostock on the Rovers Facebook page said, didn't play the greatest, but three points. And Tuesday we go again. Come on, you blues. Matthew Anson on the Rovers Facebook page said, so here's to you, Charlie Mulgrew. Rovers loves you more than you will ever know. Stuart Franklin on the One Jack Walker Facebook page says, A really good uh, result today. Made ground on the teams above us. And if we win our game in hand, then we are three points behind Shrewsbury in second. And that's critical in there, you know. But to be honest with you, games in hand don't really count. We've got to get points on the board. Uh, meanwhile, Richard uh, Richard Smallwood uh, liked a tweet by Harry Chapman, who is uh, crocked. He's a sideline at the moment with an injury. Buzzing with that result. Don't sleep on us. Um, and then Alan Myers put this little tweet out there. So rumours of a new CEO at Rovers. Announcement Monday, question mark. So that's something to look out for come Monday. So back to the fans. Up the football league we go. Kev Maverick McKellar said on the Blackburn Rovers supporters page. Stuart Franklin also said uh, this on the one. Jack Walker said, good, to, good character to equalise immediately. But with four sides above us playing against one another, we needed to win to make up some ground. And then Talk of Ewood said this little nice little uh, statistical post. Three goals in two games, six goals from centre-back this season, seven clean sheets this season, 50 Rovers appearances. Charlie Mulgrew, basically captain fantastic. I agree with that wholeheartedly. He was a uh, superstar today, man of the match for me. Um, he, uh, there were some other standout performances as well. We did grind out the result. But uh, Charlie Mulgrew is, is worth his weight in gold right now. I can, can't see... Um, he might not be the best centre-back in the world, but he's a cracking team leader, a good model for the, for the younger guys in the team, and also a good role model for the fans as well. He's always there when we need him to be, and uh, he's, he's full of confidence when it comes to uh, putting the ball in the back of the net on a dead ball situation like the penalties and so on. So big result for Rovers, big result for Charlie Mulgrew, again on his 50th appearance. So I'm, uh, I'm chuffed to bits with that. Because uh, I thought this one could be a bit of a banana skin, especially the way we started the game. I thought 
Um, we started, we dominated the first 10, 15 minutes, and then the game sort of switched. And then Bristol Rovers were all over us and uh, looked like uh, they did have a goal ruled out. And I thought at that moment when the ball went in, I thought this was, this was Wimbledon all over again. When we dominated so much and we ended with nothing. So, But fortune, fortune was on our side. You know, uh, if you look back at some of the other sides that did go up automatically, they didn't win them all pretty. And we certainly didn't do that today. Anyway, let's take a look around the ground, see what else has been happening. Uh, Shrewsbury slipped up once again, if I can find the result yet. Yeah, they lost to Bradford at home. So Bradford doing well to close the gap on the top two. Uh, Scunthorpe, apparently a six in the bounce for Scunthorpe. Two new winners over fellow promotion or playoff chasers, Charlton. So that was a massive result. Uh, our next opponents, Blackpool, were held to a, a goalless draw at Fleetwood. And Portsmouth beat their rivals, Plymouth, 1-0 at Fratton Park. Oh, and uh, Wigan, they, they, they won again. 3-1 away win at Rotherham. That's a good result for them. And that puts them top of the pops. Two points clear of Shrewsbury. As for Rovers, fifth, fifth now in the table. 34 points. That's the same amount of points as Charlton. But that's a five-point cushion over Portsmouth in seventh. And, but we are, do have two games in hand, which don't really matter. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. But before I go, make sure you head over to my YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button to keep you bang out to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. The games are coming thick and fast, and I'll be previewing the Blackpool game probably in about 24 hours, so stand by for that bad boy. I also want to give a shout-out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out their website or their forum, make sure you do so. Links in the description below. It's a good opportunity for you guys to meet up with other fellow Rovers fans to talk about the results, such as this beauty that keeps us right in the mix for the playoff places uh, and maybe maybe more. Um, I am on Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud and all the rest. So again, all those links are in the description below. So yes, kudos to Tony Mowbray. He did, well, when I say kudos, I mean partial kudos. He did tinker with the squad, but he did get the result in the end. It wasn't pretty, but three points in the bag is what we need right now. And on to the next one, Blackpool at uh, Bloomfield Road. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, try for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.